Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Romans chapter 8, verse 3, Ruth chapter 4, verse 12, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for all you've done. Jesus, help us to remember what you've done for us. Help us to live it daily as we remember it, God. Help us to remember your suffering, God, and your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For God has done what the law weaned by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. All right. And so let's just go through this. It says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. So the law was weakened by the flesh, right? Even though God created the law, because man's flesh and his sin nature was so strong and prevalent, um, it caused it didn't cause righteousness to come out of him. The law didn't, right? You would think, okay, you you give somebody a whole bunch of rules, and then you would think that, okay, well, this will help us to do right, right? But instead, it just showed them all of the places that they were wrong and continuously going wrong, right? So instead of breeding righteousness, it caused um, more sin consciousness, right? So it says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. So that flesh was weak. And so therefore it weakened the law, right? And so um, even more so, more things were added to the law and more things were added to the law instead of um, people having the law, all the details written in their heart, like, you know, God telling them, okay, don't do this. Cause even though it's not technically coveting, um, you still shouldn't go over there and do that. Right. Or, or this or that. So, so instead of just hearing God's voice, when he spoke to them, um, or, or spoke to the prof through the prophets or, or, or as they learned in the temple. So instead of gaining that faith through that way, they, they just made more and more and more rules and they did not relax any of the rules. They just made more rules, even if it was like a really heavy burden for them to bear. And, and they still failed, right? As this line of standard was created, more and more falling occurred rather than making man righteous. And so it says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. So God's resolution to, um, to this problem of, of sinful flesh and, and, and people falling more and more as they were under the law, his solution to that was to send his son who was in that that same likeness of sinful flesh right he was just like us he was in flesh he experienced all the temptations that we experience he 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 went through all of the tests and trials that we went through right and even more so because he had to experience it not just for one person's life he had to experience it for all men so he had a variety of of temptations and sin and tests and trials, even with the fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he, he had a lot that he went through, right? So this was God's solution. It says by sending his own son for in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. How did he condemn sin in the flesh? Well, he he lived and walked that out perfectly, right? He condemned sin in the flesh because he kicked it in the teeth and said, I can handle you law, 
right? I can, I can take care of the devil, right? I can stomp my foot on his head and crush his head, right? Which was the prophecy. He was able to do that. He mastered sin. Remember when Cain, um, was having so many issues and about to kill Abel, you know, God came to him and told him he needed to master sin. And Christ was the man that mastered sin. Christ was the one that was in that sinful flesh likeness. And yet he did not sin, right? He mastered sin. All right. And he was the only one who could do that. So, um, all right. And the second verse that the Lord gave me was Ruth chapter four, verse 12. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. So this is a blessing on the house of Boaz. And um, they're speaking about Ruth and and speaking that, you know, um, that her house would be bountiful, right? It says, and may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. All right. And so um, we know that Perez means breakthrough, right? Because remember when he was born, um, even though his brother came out first, um, or at least put a hand or something out first, he somehow maneuvered his way into the birth canal and was born first, right? And so this was like a major thing. And so um, his name means breakthrough Perez. And so um, it says, may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Remember, Tamar and Judah were not a couple, right? Tamar had to play the harlot um, in order to get uh, Judah to impregnate her in order for her to have a child because her husband had died. And then the second husband had died and then he wouldn't give up any more of his sons. And so um, she did what she did. So all of these are unlikely circumstances. We've talked about this before um, um, in which Christ came through, right? The Christ child, that is the most important thing about about this scripture right we're looking at uh tamar and judah we're looking at perez we're looking at ruth what is the major thing that is the thing that ties them they are all in the lineage of christ right all that they had done in their lives no matter how great or how small the most important thing was they carried the seed of Christ through time right they were the they were the sinful flesh right that was going through their lives and they carried that seed they were a part of this issue of the law they were a part of 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 the the sinful flesh right but they carried the seed and that was the most important thing is that Christ came through these people right Christ was born through the vehicle of these people um we can we can read this over and over again we can we can read about Ruth we can read about Tamar Judah all these people in the word but the thing is Christ was the answer, right? To all the issues, the sinful problems, the 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 disease, the sickness, the sin, the flesh, the carnality, right? Christ was the answer and he was the seed that came through these vehicles, right? All right. And so um let's read back Romans eight and three real quick for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. All right. And so let's read Ephesians chapter three, verse 16, the third one that God gave me that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so where the law was condemning people where the law was made weak because of sinful flesh now that we have Christ who has been carried through these vehicles of time um, now that we have Christ who ha is the breakthrough of Perez's house now that we have Christ who who is the abundance of Ruth's house right we have Christ 
He gives us this access. He gives us this thing that the law could not give us, right? The law could not make righteous man, right? But now that we have Christ, we have that righteous covering. It says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant to you to be strengthened. He may grant you to be strengthened with power, through his spirit in your inner being. His spirit is going to come inside of you when you receive Christ, right? And he is going to grant you power. Where once we were um, um, the law, which was made weak by sinful flesh, right? We are, are given power power because of the spirit in our innermost being right and that that gives us a clue to power in itself comes inside of us through our innermost being how does it come there by his spirit he gives us power and so it says that according to the riches of his glory he may grant you to be strengthened so that strength comes from the riches of his glory, the riches of his glory. God has riches inside of his glory, right? In his kavod, in his his holy heaviness, in his place of dwelling. He has great riches, right? And he's going to grant them to us by his spirit in our innermost being to be strengthened, right? So that is That's amazing Um, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant to you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your innermost being. So we, we have to remember that we now have power. We're no longer weakened um, and, and made knowledgeable just of our sins. Right. And, and the law is pointing at us saying guilty, right? Now we have power through his spirit in our innermost being. Now we have riches of his glory, right? And 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 that gives us so much ability. Where did we get this? We got this through Christ. We got this through the, the Christ child that came to us and that died for our sins. He granted us access to that riches of his glory, right? He granted us access to this this spiritual holy place um and and that thing can give you power right when you allow the holy spirit to come into you it's going to strengthen your innermost being it's going to give you power you may not sense it in your physical man or maybe you do maybe you do sense it in your physical man but either way you are being strengthened in your innermost being right? You, you have to have faith in that. You have to trust that because God is doing it. He's doing a mighty work in the people of God today. And in some of you need power. Some of you need strength. Some of you need, you know, a new heart. Some of you need some, some great miracles to occur. And you know what? He can do that for you. How does he do it? Through his spirit in your inner being, right? He's going to do it and he's going to, and where's the spirit going to get that from? It's going to get it from the riches of his glory. It's going to pull it down from the riches of his glory and, and that he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your innermost being. So just imagine a great and grand architect, right? Architect. And, and they are in their mind, right? They're, well, people look at this architect as the best of the best, right? And so if they are the best of the best and they draw out a schematic and say, okay, this is going to be my next building, then, you know, people are going to trust that, right? People are going to say that building is as good as built, right? Because this is a famous architect and he has money behind him. He has great ideas, right? And that's, that's how God is, right? God has things in his riches of his glory, right? And and he's going to grant them to us, right? And so Holy Spirit is going to 
reach up there and he's going to pull that thing from the spirit realm and put it in the natural and put it inside of you, right? So even if you don't see it, it's something that's coming from the spirit and it's going to make its manifestation in the physical realm, right? So it says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Wow. God is going to going to grant some things, pour some things out, some strength, right? So in in your innermost being some strength. It's as good as built. That house is as good as built. Don't worry about the fact that you don't see the wall. Don't worry about the fact that you don't have the furniture picked out. Don't worry about the fact that you don't even, you don't have any picked out a color. That house is as good as built. Your strength and your power is as good as manifested. You must trust and believe that your God is on your side. What can man do to you? right? You have this Holy Spirit that's making intercession for you. He cares for you and he's going to do what it takes to make sure that your innermost being is being strengthened, that that power is flowing in you, that those riches of his glory are granted to you. Trust in him. He has a way for you. He has a way for you. You just need to walk in it. Amen. All right, you guys. Let's look back at all three of the scriptures for God has done Romans eight, verse three, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Ruth chapter four, verse 12. And may your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring that the Lord will give you by this young woman. And then Ephesians chapter three, verse 16, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. God has great things in store for you. Why? Because Christ came, Christ came and he dealt with this sin issue. He mastered sin for you right? And and now you're able to walk out this calling. Why? Because you have strength, you have power, you have power in your innermost being by his spirit. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for strengthening our minds and strengthening our hearts, God. You are the keeper of our hearts and our minds. You are the keeper of our inner being. Holy Spirit, have your way in us. We love you so much, Holy Spirit. You are so good and we are grateful for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that, amen. Just trust and believe that he will. Um, also, Jesus wants us to um, make sure that we are um, being led to a church home. Um, go out, go to that church home, be around other believers so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Um, go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life and also be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Um, and also, if you're having a problem with hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, just sit down, read his word, chew on his word, and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. 
All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.